Morning Geeks! Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to Morning Geeks, the show where we geek out the way that any geek should geek out um, with news and views and everything on Friday morning. You know, hey, I do this on Friday morning because I care about you. Because, you know, on Monday it's like, uh, I got Monday blues. And then Tuesday it's like, uh, I got Monday blues. And then Wednesday it's like, hmm, they got it at the hump day show. That's okay. Thursday is like, ooh, Friday is coming. And then Friday, here we are. So it's like, gotta get all the, what, what are we gonna do? What, 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 what? So that's why I'm here. Welcome to the show. If this is the first time you've been to the show, thank you very much for coming to the show. We do this every single Friday. Every single Friday at 7.30 a.m., uh, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, 5.30 a.m. Pacific. So if you're up on the Pacific Coast, man, you need more coffee. Here's some coffee. There you go. Hope you're having a great day. Of course, it is Stardate 306348.87. Just so you know, uh, your Stardates are all good. Happy Heroes Day. Yeah, it's Heroes Day. We're not talking about the Greg Gruenberg and the Peter Parkmans. And yeah, I said Peter Parkman because I really don't know his actor's name. But I know Greg Gruenberg. I met him. He's a pretty good, cool guy. So... And uh, and speaking, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second here. But uh, happy Women's Equality Day. Yes. Happy Women's Equality Day. I think, uh, you know, everybody is kind of focusing on this Sunday topless day, which kind of sucks. I mean, okay, as a guy, I kind of like that. But it should never be objectified. And, and some people are kind of objectifying it, which just doesn't make sense to me. But the whole point is today is Women's Equality Day. That's what you should really be celebrating. But happy Women's Equality Day. Happy birthday to Macaulay Culkin. Happy birthday to Chris Pine. Happy birthday to Johann Heinrich Lambert, who helped us map out our ways to the future. To the future. Yeah, it's true. So, um, once again, if it's the first time you come to the show, thank you very much. We are on Facebook Live. We do this live on Facebook. We do YouTube. So you can check it out on YouTube. Excuse me. I had a couple uh, pockets that I had to take care of. And, of course, we're up on iTunes uh, and in video format and in audio format. We, I just started the audio version of, of Morning Geeks. So now you can get it on your Google Play. You can get it on your iTunes and, and your Stitchers and all that other good stuff. So hopefully uh, audio version. Come and, come and get it. Come and get it. Come and get it. So... Thanks to everybody that has been talking to me in the last week on the show, um, especially, and I was telling you, I said Greg Gruenberg, uh, that apparently there was a show that AMC put out called Geeking Out, and I got a few people, and this is how I know that people watch. I got a few people that call, came in and you know, messaged me and said, hey, they're stealing your idea with this Geeking Out. And it's like, well, uh, not really. I mean, Geek Out is a, is a term a lot of people use, um, geeking out is kind of a play on that, but it's still different. I mean, it, as long as they don't say geek out like that, you know, that's, that's the sign language for G, that's the sign language for O, geek out. Kind of like my street thing right there. So, geek out, uh, it, hey, I, I got room. And if Kevin Smith, if Greg Grunberg want to come on the show, if they want to invite me on their show, no problems. I don't have any problems with that. So, uh, I bring it, bring it on. As long as you got coffee, bring it on, so... All right, got a couple of products here this week. Uh, this one, this was kind of surprising. I don't, I don't know. Uh, sometimes you get stuff. I don't think I, I would. Anybody asked me if I wanted, if they wanted to send it. They just usually send it. So, but this is pretty interesting. It's called the Arcos driver, and what it is is a little uh, device you put on the end of your golf club. I believe I haven't really opened it. It's for, I'm looking at the uh, at the little graphic right here on the corner. So you put it on, and it, it does a performance tracking. Actually, no, it shows it right here. You put it on the end of the, your, your club, and then you can do the performance tracking. Haven't opened it yet, so that's pretty cool, um, the Arcos driver. But I also get books, and I don't review books, which is really interesting, but the, I get books nonetheless. This is probably one of the coolest of the books that I've gotten um, because there's no real reading needed to be involved in here. And as you can see... Uh, the reason why is uh, simply because they're using these, I can't remember what type of pictures these are called, but when you move the, uh, when you move it around, it actually changes the picture. Now, here's what's really cool. If you open the book, they, the pictures slide. So as I open the book, see how the eyes are sliding? 
And what's really cool is if I, if I think if I do this right, one yeah, one of the eyes pops open first, and the other eye. So, and of course they have you know through this book they have all these pages just like this. Like this is the uh, this is the tiger. I won't show you all of them because you're gonna have to get the book to get them all. But uh, you, you get the idea there, and it's really cool. It's got information. It's a great kids book. Um, it's called Jungle of Foticular Fot Book by Dan Kanan and Kathy Woolard. Uh, written by a Kathy Roller, created by Dan Kanan, Ka Kanan, Kanan, something like that. So very geeky right there. So uh, check it out. I'll have a link uh, in the show notes of where you can get this book. So uh, go to the show notes. I don't have it up right now. I should have put it in there, but I didn't think about that part. So anyway, so that's that's the geeky stuff I got for review this week. Um, of course, I did uh, some video this week on what did i do a video on um i did a video on a couple of things uh, of course if you go over to the youtube channel you can see my five things that you didn't know about steve wozniak which is pretty sweet um so i'll have that link in the show notes for that uh, where that video is uh, of course as well so and of course the show notes you can get over on facebook you can get on youtube.com forward slash geekazine facebook.com forward slash geekazine and of course uh, over at geekazine.com where you can geek out wherever you are. So, all right, well, that, with that said and done and done and said and wow, and what the heck is going on here? We got some dropped frames. Interesting. Hopefully I'm not messing things up. We're recording, so it should be good. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's get into your geek of the week and geek out that way. It's time to suit up, but who will you go as? Iron Man? Batman? What if it's a formal event? Well, no worries. Now Fun Suits allows you to dress as your favorite character, from Superman to the Joker, even subtle suits like the Justice League one. That's the center one. It, it, it looks like a regular suit. The tie has a little, I think it has Justice League logos. And of course, if you open it up, the in, inner lining also has uh, has the logo there. These are not cheap suits. I mean, they'll start at like, I think it's like $169. Um, but there's a really cool Joker one. Uh, or not, I'm sorry, not Joker, but Riddler one. And I'm, I'm thinking about that. You know, this that would be a great Halloween costume right there. But it's like $250. So do I want to pay the $250 for that or not? If you want to pay the $250 and send it to me. Yeah, you could do that. You could send it to me. Just do that. Let me know. Tweet me over at Geekazine. Uh, Think Magazine put in the geek, of course, and we will go from uh, there. All right, so here's a here's a here's a shocker for you. Uh, director Doug Lyman quit his director job at the movie Ga Gambit, and you think to yourself, why would he do that? Well, he wants to direct DC Justice's League Justice League Dark, which is not Justice League that's coming out. But because this is this sounds pretty confusing, I bet you for some uh, Justice League Dark is a group of underdogs that DC is baking on getting uh, getting their DC universe movie stuff back on track. Because let's face it, Suicide Squad, uh, pretty much suicide, suicide. It, 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 it didn't it didn't work out, and uh, and you know lots of complaints. Now Jared Leto's starting to complain saying that you know he was expecting to be in the movie a lot more and he wasn't and and it's just been a mess and uh and of course dc needs to get back on track so they can tell their story so we'll see what happens here now uh, the uh under the yeah justice league dark there we go i need more coffee for him mm, here we go justice league dark was originally going to be directed by Guillermo del Toro. And this was actually years in a process, uh, but, you know, he I guess he just backed out or something like that. So Doug Lyman, who was on Gambit, which had its own problems uh, from the get-go, Fox, it was a Fox thing. I don't know if it was a show or if it was going to be a movie, but it's had been having its problems. So he decided to jump ship, go to, to uh, DC uh, Justice League Dark. So interesting to see what will happen. But the real question is, are we making too many confusing movies, uh, superhero movies, to try and tell other stories and go from there? Uh, it's, 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 we're getting very, very, very thick 
in superhero movies. And it's going to be hard to really figure out who's where and what's how. And some of you are going, well, Batman, he's, he's Marvel, isn't he? Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's move on from there. That was weird. What was that? Okay. Let's move on from there. Uh, if you want to check out more, we got that over at geek.com. 25 years ago, Linus Torvalds asked the people, what would you want to see most in Minix? Minix was another operating system, if you didn't know. Uh, so he officially announced that he would be creating something that would end up be called Linux. And uh, pretty interesting stuff there. That was interesting. Things are happening over here. I don't know why. It's, it's kind of like... Anyway, so uh, he officially announced 25 years ago that he'd be creating the Linux operating system. 25 years later, Linux is running on millions of desktops. So happy anniversary to Linux and the other operating system. I've used Linux many a times. Uh, we did a uh, we did digital signage stuff and we used Linux operating system because no license, you know, uh, you don't you don't have to pay for anything. So you have an operating system. I just needed something to run the program on. That's what we did. So that was that was a lifetime ago. I don't I don't do digital signage too much anymore, except through here through Geekazine. So let's move on. So yeah, I did do the uh, thing with Steven Wozniak, but did you? Uh, he 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 was on the uh, he was on news sources uh, left and right here this uh, this week. Um, he was he basically was saying, hey, you know, ditching that headphone jack is going to piss piss people off. And I I have to ask the question: Is it really? Uh, even Steve Wozniak, like I said, he thinks so, but I say no. I can tell you, I can't tell you the last time that I actually hooked up a headphone jack to my iPhone. Um, the only thing that this thing does is collect pocket lint, which I got to take a pick, toothpick and pick out every now and then. Now, I actually, I agree with Woz, Bluetooth does need to improve greatly, but I just reviewed this one right here. This is the Moto Force Z, and as you can see, there is absolutely no headphone jack. It's using the type C uh, connector and it came with an adapter for a headphone jack. So there is a way to hook up a set of headphones. It's just, there's just not gonna be a headphone jack. This is like there's no USB port, just like there's no HDMI port. That's what this lightning connector is supposed to do. And then you can probably put on a humongous dock or something like that with headphones and, and HDMI ports and all that other good stuff. So. But I don't know. It, I think I think it, it makes it a little bit more waterproof. You get a new speaker. It you remove it. You get more stuff into your phone. I think in the end that's going to be the better thing. So, but what do you think? Do you are you gonna are you upset that they're getting rid of the headphone jack? Let me know. Tweet me over at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. Now, this next story, and and this could happen to me at any time today. I could have said something that could have really irked somebody. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, they're going after my Twitter account, they're going after my Facebook account, they're going after my emails, they're going after everything. They hack my website, they could. And this this is why I'm very adamant about this. I'm just gonna say it up front, but Ghostbuster, comedian, Leslie Jones, website was hacked. Her iCloud account was ransacked. It cr included private photos, nude photos, and she's she's been under an attack ever since Ghostbusters came out. It's a movie, folks. It's a movie. And she had to leave Twitter because of these profiles that are nothing but hate. They just they just tweet hate. And they're still allowed to continue on with this. And yeah, some of these profiles probably have been deleted since then. But there are some of these profiles that are still around that just throw out hate and racial slurs. And I'll tell you something, it simply disgusts me. It disgusts me on so many levels. It disgusts me on the fact that somebody can just completely ruin somebody's... Because Leslie Jones, if this was like three or four years ago, and this was like Leslie Jones' breakout thing, you know, that could, that could ruin her. She's got a little bit of traction with Saturday Night Live and everything like that. She's, she's been established... So I think she can get past this, but some people, this could completely ruin their careers in a heartbeat. And these people don't, I don't think they care. 
Yeah, okay, Ghostbusters wasn't the best movie. The reboot wasn't the best movie. It wasn't the worst movie either. It wasn't the worst movie this, this summer. And yet, people are just sitting there just completely... Dis it, it just... It really, like I said, it irks me to no end. And uh, there's a lot of celebrities that have been coming to her aid. I know there's a hashtag out there, um, Leslie Jones something or other. Um, I saw Jim Parsons on Instagram uh, posted on how he worked with her at S and SNL, and they talked about uh, they talked about doing some future stuff. So um, it, it's 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 just horrible. It's horrible, and I. It's, I don't know. I'll leave it at that. But my because you know I don't want them to come after me. Uh, but you know it's yeah, that can ruin somebody's life. And you know people are we're just trying to to make a living here. I don't know. So what do you think on that? Let me know. Tweet me over at Geekazine. Let's move on. Duran changed my life. Boxing geeks will get treated to Hands of Stone this weekend. Robert De Niro plays a retired boxing coach that finds the next big thing. The conflict comes when the boxer, played by Edgar Ramirez, doesn't want a white guy to coach him. This is an adaptation of a true story of Robert Duran in 1968. Ellen Barkett and John Turturro also star in this movie. As Halloween approaches, we'll be seeing a lot more horror and suspense movies. Don't Breathe is one of them. A group of thieves breaks into the wrong house. Stephen Lang plays the blind man as he stalks each thief. Just like he did in Avatar. There has to be a way out of here. B-movie geeks and apocalyptic geeks will be looking for this movie over the weekend. Might not find it, though. Daylight's End is about continuing to survive in a world where a viral infection has taken over. A rogue drifter helps some people stranded at a police station to get to a sanctuary. The movie is in limited release. The NSA is really tracking every cell phone in the world. Most Americans don't want freedom. They want security. Except people, they don't even know they've made that bargain. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is the anti-American Snowden in a new trailer out this week. Oliver Stone's adaptation of Edward Snowden's book will release on September 16th. Maybe Snowden should worry about this next movie coming to life instead. There's this video that kills you seven days after you watch it. The next generation in Ring movies starts as the trailer for Rings was released. It looks like they're taking it beyond the watch the video and die in seven days premises. After all, who has a VCR anymore? It only makes sense to put this video up on social media. I could see the Facebook post now. She watched this video and seven days later you'll never believe what happens. Johnny Galecki and Amy Teagarden star and it will release in October. Kids will rejoice as the Jungle Book will come to life on their TVs on Tuesday on DVD. However, you can get the digital download now. The Jon Favreau adaptation was a hit with moviegoers, so this might replace that 1967 version and definitely will make you forget about the remakes in 1998 and 2003 with Haley Joel Osment. And that's new to this week. Mechanics box. All right. Okay, and uh, yeah, I forgot to, uh, I forgot about the loop there. <laughs> so we're back. Uh, yeah, if you want to get the Jungle Jungle Book on DVD, it's on digital download right now. You can download it right now. But if you want it on DVD, I got the link in the show notes that you can uh, go get that. Uh, of course, that helps support me. So thank you very much. Um, so let's move on from there. And uh, yeah, here we go. Let's uh, get back into the show. Have you heard about this trailer uh, for the Russian superhero movie called Guardians? I, I don't know what it. I don't know what it's called. Uh, it has a Russian name, but uh, I, I and I didn't put it down here. Uh, but some people have been wondering if this is an actual movie. Uh, from everything that I saw, yeah, it looks like an actual movie. Uh, trailer looks pretty good. It does give us a release date of February twenty third. Um, we'll have to wait until until you know comes out to find out if it's actually a true movie. I have a feeling if they put more if they're putting more promotion behind it. We'll see a little bit more, but uh, it's they got subtitles on the bottom. Just go through it. It's it's it's. I was pretty impressed uh, when I saw it last night, and, and uh, check it out. Pretty pretty cool stuff right there. Kudos to uh, Chris Hemsworth and Tom Hiddleston. They spent time a couple days ago at the Lady Salento Children's Hospital. Hopefully, I pronounced that right. 
Uh, and basically, that's in Queensland, Australia. They were cheering up the kids that uh, all the kids that have that are at the hospital for different reasons, and uh, they had a lot of fun. Uh, and and what's even cooler is th this picture we saw right here, which came from uh, Chris Hemsworth's Instagram. Somebody Legoized it, and <laughs> so that's the Lego version as opposed to the regular version, and it looks pretty sweet. I mean, even with the facial expressions, um, and they got the well, it looks like they just kind of superimposed Legos over the over the characters but you know hey you know you do that that's you know I love what we can do with Legos nowadays I love what we can do with Legos nowadays it's just crazy on that so all right let me get this going there we go okay what's your opinion is Pokemon dead do you feel that Pokemon okay it's it's run its course it's done um, if you think yes, I think you're grossly mistaken. But, okay, so 10 million people, they dropped off the game. No duff. Hello. The, you know, it, it's, like, it's like the honeymoon period. Honeymoon's over, now it's time to get into the game. I, I, who didn't think that was going to happen? Not, not going to happen. If you look at the history of any game that gets put out there, whether it be... Uh, Pokemon Go. It's uh, it's it's other the other version. Ingress. Uh, Clash of Clans. Words with Friends. Everybody flocks to it to find out what it's like, and it's like, eh, okay. Do I really want to put in my time into this app? And for a lot of people, the answer is no. I don't want to go walking around. I mean, I have some investment in Pokemon Go myself. I'm only level six. I haven't even gone to a g one of the Poke Gyms. I haven't even competed and defeated whatever. So uh, I would, you know, that's it's just not high end on my list. But it's not like I'm not doing anything. And the same thing with Ingress. Did the exact same thing. So, uh, so many times there's a lot. There's a lot of reasons why drop off. First of all, all the people that have completed the game, and there are a few of them that have completed the game. Or gotten to a point where it's like, okay, I've got enough Pokemon. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, further, everybody's getting ready for the 2016-2017 school year. Uh, really, really, this is, it's just that the game just got started too. Niantic has already dealt with these issues with Ingress. You know, the drop-offs and, and stuff like that. They, they must be expecting this. If the company reads their data and their usage correctly, then now is not the time to be pushing out any updates. But there's going to be a push again. I would expect it'll be after school starts and everybody's settled in, but it will be before Halloween. I have no doubt that we're gonna start to see uh, holiday specific Pokemon all of a sudden start to pop up. That's how you keep things going. So there'll be an update. And of course, there was also that track, that third-party tracking thing that they turned off. So a lot of people said, well, if, if that's not going to happen, I'm just not going to mess with the game until it turns back on. So that might have dropped some people off. But the other thing is, once school starts, you know, in a maybe in a week or two, maybe even maybe even next week. I mean, next week we do have the holiday, uh, uh, and uh, maybe that's that'll be a good time to put it put it out an update so people can go walking around during the holiday weekend. But most likely it'll be afterwards, and we will start to see uh, seasonal-specific Pokemon. I'm, I'm pretty sure on that. Uh, I don't have any insight or anything like that, but that's, that's my guess, is we're going to see we're gonna see a lot of people uh, coming out uh, with these, uh, with the, or a lot of Niantic coming out with all these updates. And that's going to start bringing it, because they've got a gear for the long term. School year... Uh, the school years is, is the toughest thing, especially the winter months are the toughest thing because nobody wants to go walking in 20 below weather. And they don't want people walking out in 20 below weather because then you, all of a sudden you start hearing news stories about people who went Pokemon Go hunting and they froze to death. And that's not good. So, like I said, Niantic has dealt with this before. They know If they read their data correct, they know that now's not the time to push. And that's that's what's happening. So I don't think Pokemon's dead. If it was, if if they if that would have happened, then I would have guessed that they wouldn't have even tried to push it out. So, but you know, we'll see what happens in the following months uh, and go from there. But uh, I would expect, you know, uh, when 
different things come out and then they drop and everybody said, oh, it's dead. And then all of a sudden they just take their slow time to, to pace back up. And then next thing you know, you go, well, what happened there? How did it get so popular? Well, because they played the long game, not the short game. And a lot of these people that are putting out these articles, they're playing the short game. They're trying for the clickbait. And it's, so just avoid those. Avoid those articles. So anyway, that, I think that does it for this episode. Yeah, I don't know. We got, we got all our articles. I didn't really want to end on Pokemon Go, but it was kind of a slow geek week. And of course, we had a lot of great movies coming out. And uh, so you can check that all out. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think, uh, what I missed, if I missed anything. Let me know. Tweet me. Tweet me at Geekazine. Geekazine at gmail.com. Let me do that again. Tweet me at Geekazine. Geekazine at gmail.com. Yeah, you're going to tweet me. Yes. Yes. You will do that. So I know what I can put in for next week. Now, uh, yeah, well, next week we will have a show. Yeah, it. I have to figure it out because there are some other things. It's a holiday weekend here in the United States. So I'm, I might have to do the show a little bit early. you got to work on that. But anyway, for now, we're going to do it uh, Friday, 8.30 a.m., just like we always do. Um, but until then, you guys geek out. We'll see you next week, and you guys take care. Uh, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Let's go. Bye.